Hi everyone, and thank you for joining me at Kay Warner Studio. Today we're visiting shadow boxes. These were all made out of 12 by 12 paper. I didn't do any adjusting with this one, so it's 12 by 12, and these both were 11 by 11. That extra inch does make a difference. These are the same width on all three, but the space inside is a, a larger you know you could even make this for a photograph and put it inside I've seen them decorate it with different flowers and things uh, I made one for my granddaughter put her picture inside with some with her name along the bottom and letters and butterflies and fancied it all up this one here I was going to give to my grandson it has ro ri um, robots and Lego and other things so it would be my advice that uh, you would stamp this with your desired design should you want one after you do your cutting and your scoring just so that you uh, can see how it's going to lay and you're just going to cut those you know, the corners off and it seems like a waste of ink and time when you really don't need to have that portion done so I'll show you how to do that after and right now we're going to do a white one. This is basil uh, textured paper and as I mentioned in my review of the Teflon bowl folder I prefer to use this for my scoring rather than this little uh, tool that comes with it because I end up putting holes in it or I don't or I jump the line so this is optimum for me. So in this particular piece of paper it's 12 by 12 and you're going to score four lines, three quarters of an inch from the left side in. So we're going to go three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, and three. And you're going to, go to rotate and do all four sides the same. Now, when you uh, come, I'll do one more side and then we'll do. So, then your next, after you get these done, you're going to make uh, two lines, two additional lines, just on two parts. So, we're going to come here uh, and at three and three quarters, we're going to make a line, but just to the second line. And then over here, we're going to come in and do it eight and a quarter and just do it to the second line. Now, if you were doing it with 11 by 11 paper, your final score would be at seven and a quarter and not eight and a quarter. So now we're going to turn this 180 degrees. So directly across the opposite side from where you have your two scores at three and a half and seven and eight and a quarter. It's going to be up here now, and you're going to repeat that. So you're going to go three and three quarters to the second line, and you're going to do eight and a quarter to the second line, and that's it. So now we'll put away our scoring. And this part is relatively easy. You just have to take some care to pay attention to what's going on here. I know white's a little hard to see, so how about I turn it upside down? Maybe that will be a little bit better. So we're going to cut up right to the end of the fourth line. Here's the one that's only going in when you made your additional one. So we don't want to, we're going to cut those last. Your two lines that only go to the second bar. So now we're going to come right up this line to the fourth line. And we're going to come over here. One, two, three, four. I'm going to cut up the fourth line. Okay. And then we are going to do the other side. So we have one, two, three, four. We're going to cut up the fourth line right up to the line. To the last score line on this side. And now we're going to go on to the left hand side. Count from the far left. One, two, three, four. And we're going to cut up that score line. I like to go on the other side of it. Okay, so right up to that line. Now we're going to go where we have the two short lines. So on this one, you cut on the outside of the line just up to 
to your second line. See that? And then you're going to insert your scissors and, and from that corner to the corner, other corner, kitty corner, snip. And then you can see you have a score line there again. You just follow that score line up to that last line and the row and there you go. So you have a shape like this. I'm not too sure if you saw all that, so we'll do it again. The short line goes to the second line. You bring that cut right up to the second line. Then you insert your scissors and you cut kitty corner. One corner to the other. Great. And then follow this last line up. And snip that off. What you have so far. Now we're going to flip it on the other side. We have these same two lines that go to the second line. We're going to repeat that process. We're going to cut this one. We're going to insert our scissors and cut kitty corner, quarter to quarter, and then we're going to take this up and remove this corner completely. There we go. And we'll do the next one. Up to the top for your second kitty corner, corner to corner. There we go, and then up to the top, and away we go. So now we've gotten this up to snip that off a bit. So now we've gotten rid of all of the corners, and this is what your template should look like. Yeah, when you have a texture and you want that to be part of your shadow box, you would lay your desired the desired side to facing you when you did your scoring. So now we need to burnish all of these. The nicer your score lines are, and the nicer you have them burnished, so it's over the mountain, and that mountain is the ridge on the inside, and you'll see that now in here. So over the mountain, let's try this again. So usually it takes a couple of tries with this to have it done nicely. And the trick of it is really to make sure you cut well and that you burnish well. Okay, so while we'll that aside, I have another one done. Pardon my chair, I'm going to sit down. It makes a squeak. There we go. So, in this, some people have used wet glue. I prefer to use the double sided tape. And that is solely my preference, but I find it makes for a neater job. So, now we're going to lay it the side up. The side that we want to have facing us and you lay your tape just below on this side of your burnish scored and burnish line just underneath that and you want to lay that give it a trim you can use there's a red sticky tape that's uh, available there's, uh, I wouldn't get into you know, some of the thinner ones that uh, they may be acid free, but they don't allow for um, paper to paper it, to stay after a fashion. Because this, this is, you know, especially if you give it to somebody that likes to put it on display, it might have a lot of handling or the, uh, the heat will make the adhesive lift away. This particular brand is called express it and I find that it's good. I've used uh, a couple other ones that just weren't able to keep my thing and my seams closed and I do think it had a lot to do with the texture of the paper that I used. It was almost like it had a film on the outside and it was texturized. So just things to keep in mind when you're picking your paper. And as you can see I have put tape underneath the score line on every one. Now we're going to flip it over. So this is the back side, the part that we're not going to see. And you uh, take
you take and just go on these corners. You'll see at the end why these are important. So just put your tape on each of these. When you remove the tape off of the other one, save the, the uh, um, gosh, my mind's, my mind's going blank, but the, the backing of the tape because you're going to need it to, because uh, we're going to miter the corners in nicely. Okay, so that's it for the tape, so we'll put that away. Now I'm going to get a pokey tool because we're definitely going to need it. Okay, so here we go. So not on the sides that have the angled cuts. The other one, we'll do this one first. Okay, so we're just going to lift up our double-sided tape. We're going to have this folded in half. We've got a little extra. We have this folded in half, so it has one, two sections. You're going to hold your fingers at the bottom, just below the tape and make sure that that is held snugly while you fold it over. The idea is to make sure that that end, see if you can see that, there's no, there isn't a gap between the side and the bottom on the inside. It's snug, one pushed right up against the other. Okay, so we do that and that makes a nice little, because these lines are nicely scored, we've got a nice, um, sturdy wall there. Now we're going to repeat this process. Fold it over twice. You know, not to fold it over twice, but fold it so that there's two sections visible. And then hold on to the bottom corners at the top and fold over and press. Now this one too is nicely done. And the paper is snug up against it and we've got Beautifully. Okay, so now we're at the end where we have these little angle cuts. So we're going to remove the tape on those. Okay, and then we're going to take the release backing and we're going to reapply it so that it's hanging out. We can pull on it if we need to. Okay, so now we're just going to cut that off. And then we're going to go over this other side here. Um, this is a little wider, this um, double back tape, but it's it's great. I mean, it's, I would say, as good as if not better than this core tape. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to take our pokey tool and we're going to remove the release paper off of that. And on this, these sides, you just fold it the once. You don't have. You just have one uh, section of the paper. You don't have two like on the other side. And you fold that, fold that, and you bring it right up to the line and push it in. Same idea as before. You're trying to keep that snug. Oh, my tapes, my little release tape is coming off. So I'm going to stick that back on and redo this. Okay, so we fold this down, hold our fingers in there nice and snug, and then fold it up. So inside here, on the edge where these are, you just, it's lined up with your score line. So you've got this first score line here, and you've got your second score line here, and these this happens to line up with the ends on this side. Now, instead of touching anything else to do with that, we're going to go directly over to this side. I'm going to remove our sticky here and here, and put the release paper back on to keep it covered until you're ready to do your mitered edges. And then we're just going to do that like this. It's better if you leave them a little longer than cutting them right up to the end. They're harder to get your fingers on the paper. So just fold it over one section. Okay, you line that up so there's two sections visible. And you press that down. Okay, so.
So, as before, the idea is try to get this thing tucked, the corners tucked in. Okay, so now we have all of these papers. It's okay if they get caught underneath here because they're not going to go anywhere. Let's are inside. So, I lift the angled part over the straight part. Push the corners in together and give a little push with your finger and that tape that was on the angled edge, that was on the edge on an angle, is right underneath that joint. Now we're going to do this one. Let's see, I have a lace paper stuck inside there too. So I'm trying to get that out. Okay, I guess that's it. So this straight piece, you put it over the angle, under the angle piece, so the angle is over the straight piece. You give a little touch, and sometimes you might have to put your pokey tool or something in on the line to give a little help. So I'm going to come over here, get us a little help, so you have two nice snug corners, and now we're going to come over to the remaining two. Anyway, the angle over the, uh, the straight, push it up, give it a rub there. That's three corners. Okay, the angle over the straight part, put it in there. Poke it in. And there we have a nice shadow box as you can see. Nice. Now I made uh, the easels just sit on the back from a Bigs die. So there's that one. Here's the craft version, the craft, and here is the blue version with stamping. So there you go. It's, uh, if you have any questions on how to do this, just leave it in the comments below. And thank you very much for spending your time with me. Bye bye.